the entire Star Wars saga came out on Blu-ray. Weeks ago, and I've been looking forward to it and this review for months. However, in the weeks leading up to the release, rumors leaked onto the internet about some changes George Lucas has made to the movies, as if they haven't been tinkered enough with already. Since the 2004 DVD release, here's the changes to the saga. In Episode 4, R2-D2 now has some lovely rocks to hide behind when the Sand People attack Luke on Tatooine. How do you even get back there, by the way? I don't know. The Ewoks blink with CG eyelids in Episode 6. There's a digital door and camera zoom to make the entrance to Jabba's Palace look much larger than it was originally. And while we're on the subject of Jabba's Palace, they figured, why don't we add in a Doug here like in Episode 1? It looks out of place. The only change in the prequels is the CGI Yoda inserted in Episode 1 to replace the weird puppet they filmed with. Oh, and in the original trilogy, Greedo still shoots first. There's been a couple of audio changes as well. Obi-Wan's Kray Dragon Call now sounds ridiculous, and Darth Vader screams no just before throwing the Emperor down the shaft in the Death Star. If you don't believe me, there's proof online. Most of these changes are completely uncalled for, and the addition of no to that scene ruins the reason why it was my favorite scene in the entire saga in the first place. Despite not having a face or saying anything originally, you were able to see Vader struggle. Should I help my son or continue to obey my master? But throwing a no in there cheapens the whole thing and discredits the original filmmaking that went into the scene in the first place. While I'm on this tangent, George originally said in 1997 he was changing the movies to get it closer to his original, original vision since the technology wasn't around 20 years earlier. I can understand why he'd revamp the Battle of Yob and add in the Wampa and CGI Jabba and even make a whole entering Moss Eisley sequence, though that last one was a little overboard. But things that change the story like making Greedo shoot first don't have anything to do with new technology reaching your vision. That's just changing the story. And so is adding that no Darth Vader yells. And now he's changed the movies for the 2004 DVDs and again for the Blu-rays this year. So the saga is getting harder and harder to recognize. And these changes lately are things he could have added 14 years ago. I've got a lot of respect for George Lucas, but it seems that he'll think of an idea like, let's add some rocks in there and just throws them in when no one needed rocks in there in the first place. It's not getting back to an original vision, it's just throwing stuff into a movie. With all the effort of adding a CG Yoda or random rocks, you think Lucasfilm could fix some of the lightsaber inconsistencies, the matte lines, the boxes, or the jump cuts, you know, the actual mistakes in the movies. It's easy. I could do it myself. Really. I could. I could rant about this for days, so I'm just going to get on with the rest of the review. The original trilogy looks great in HD. They didn't just put a high def scan in the discs, they touched up and refined the color. Scenes on Tatooine look crisp and the snow on Hoth looks white instead of bright blue as snow should. The lightsabers look better than they have in a while throughout the entire original trilogy. And although there's still room for improvement as I said earlier, it still looks good. They also fixed a cropping issue in The Phantom Menace so you can see the whole picture instead of what you had before which was slightly cropped in. They used the master files for episodes 2 and 3 since those were filmed digitally in the first place so we're theoretically seeing everything those files have to offer and it looks extremely crisp and vivid. The sound mix is amazing on the Blu-rays too. It's a 7.1 surround sound mix and the sound especially shines in episode 4. The DVD release was plagued with annoying sound issues and inconsistencies but it sounds smooth and slick in the latest release. The main attraction, however, is the over 40 hours of bonus features. Spread out across three bonus discs, I still haven't watched everything. But the bonus features offer deleted scenes, interviews, and behind the scenes footage from both trilogies. It's exhilarating to watch new scenes with Han Solo or Luke Skywalker nearly 30 years after that trilogy ended. And there's new deleted scenes that weren't in the first run of prequel DVDs too. One of my favorite bonus features is an interview with Doc and an interview documentary with the makers of The Empire Strikes Back, including the film's director Irvin Kirshner, who died earlier this year, sadly. There's also over an hour of Star Wars spoofs on the last discs, which includes the hilarious Weird Al parody of American Pie and The Saga Begins, and Star Wars skits from Saturday Night Live. Overall, this is a solid Blu-ray set. If I had to give it a score, I'd give it 8 out of 10. The only thing that would bump it up to a perfect 10 would be including a restored 1080p master of the original theatrical versions of episodes 4, 5, and 6. I wouldn't mind any of the new changes in the trilogy if Lucasfilm released them as a theatrical cut alongside the current modified version, aka the Blu-rays, and called that version a director's cut, like so many other movies do these days. The Lucas didn't technically direct some of those films, but let's brush that aside. But to wrap things up, it's a great Blu-ray set and ensures that the Force will continue to be with you always.